name it. Hey guys, I'm Phil and welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Today we're looking at another processor for the popular Socket 7 platform. This CPU is quite interesting because it can be used in the Socket 7 as well as Super Socket 7 motherboards. It is also the fastest processor available for the Socket 7, representing the last of its kind and such products always get special attention. It is the K62400, a processor from Advanced Micro Devices, better known as AMD. Let's find out what this processor is all about. We got games and benchmarks to look at and we will compare it against a range of other popular Socket 7 processors. The K62400 launched in November of 1998 and is compatible with the Socket 7 as well as the Super Socket 7 platform. If you have a Socket 7 motherboard, the CPU uses a frontside bus of 66 MHz and a multiplier of 6x. This will result in an internal clock speed of 400 MHz. Because not all motherboards support the 6x multiplier, the processor simply takes the 2x multiplier as 6x. AMD has done similar tricks before with some of the 486 processors, a great move as it means more motherboards support this processor. If you are the proud owner of a Super Socket 7 motherboard, then the frontside bus runs at 100 MHz with a multiplier of 4x, also resulting in an internal clock speed of 400 MHz. The CPU has a whopping 64 kilobytes of level 1 cache and supports Intel's MMX as well as AMD's own 3D Now extensions. The CPU runs typically around 2.2 volts, which most motherboards should support. Although some don't go that low, but that shouldn't concern you too much. These CPUs can handle a bit of overvolting, just make sure that the cooling is up to scratch. CPUWorld.com states a launch price of 283 US dollars. So this CPU was good value, not as cheap as the Sarix, which had to price the CPUs quite aggressively, but definitely cheaper compared to Intel that usually charged a premium. I had a look on eBay yesterday and found a ton of listings for this processor. Also, you can use faster models as well, like a K62500 for example, so you shouldn't have any issues finding this processor. Prices here in Australia are around 20 Australian dollars, including shipping. Always check in your area, especially if you're from the US, you will likely get better prices. Let's dive straight into some games. We have a mix of DOS games running at 320x200 as well as 640x480. Back to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the sixth day of November, year 2072. You are currently.
Always great to see some good old DOS games. We will talk about the performance a short while later, but now we are going to check out some benchmarks to get some hard numbers, put them into some graphs to better get an idea of how the AMD K62 400 stacks up against the competition from Intel and Cyrix. We're using the same test system as in the previous videos based around an Asus SP97XV motherboard. We've got a list of all the processors here in the picture. 32 megabytes of SDRAM, a Tang ET6000 PCI video card, 16 gigabyte SD card with an SD to ID adapter and an ID DVD drive, GoTech floppy emulator and we're using MS-DOS 7.1. In 3D Bench 1.0c we can finally see a processor that is able to beat the Cyrix which traditionally is very fast in this benchmark. Moving on to Chris's 3D Bench, the AMD manages a solid lead. Same goes for PC Player Benchmark at 320 by 200 91 FPS is significantly faster than all the other processors. In Wolfenstein 3D, the Cyrix M2 is a little bit faster, but come on, 181 FPS, that's plenty for this game. In Doom, the AMD also takes the lead by a small margin, and once again, Doom runs at a locked 35 FPS, so getting 98 is plenty. In Quake, we can see that the floating point unit of the K62 clock for clock is not as good as the one from Intel, however, the AMD has a much higher clock speed and therefore still ends up on top. Let's look at some games running at 640x480. There's not much of an improvement here. The AMD manages to gain 2 frames over the Cyrix M2. In Descent 2, however, the AMD clearly is the fastest CPU. And also in Wing Commander 4, the ultimate stress test, we can see that the AMD is vastly superior. 15 FPS inside the hangar, that's heaps better than all the other processors. Let's check out compatibility with older speed sensitive games such as Wing Commander, Testra 3 or many classic adventure games from Sierra and LucasArts. Go into the BIOS, disable level 1 and level 2 caches and the machine performs roughly at the level of a 386 running at 25 MHz. In 3D Bench 1.0 we're getting a score of 10 FPS, making the K62 the slowest processor with caches disabled. Now if you're asking me this is a good thing, it means more games will run at the correct speed. We can see the same with Wolfenstein 3D, 21.4 frames per second is what the K62 400 runs at. However, there's more to all of this. A processor running at 400 MHz is not something I would recommend if you're planning on slowing it down to play older DOS games. Although the benchmarks check out, in actual gameplay, we can see some small issues appear. Games such as Wing Commander run fine most of the time, but there are cases when the game suddenly runs a little bit too fast, which can feel quite weird. So this is just something to keep in mind. My recommendation is to clock the CPU as low as possible if your goal is to simulate a 386 by disabling the caches. Let's analyze the gameplay and benchmark results. The AMD K62 400 is without a doubt the fastest Socket 7 processor. In almost every test it topped the charts against the competition from Intel and Cyrix. Only in Wolfenstein 3D, the Cyrix M2 300 was able to take the lead. 320x200 resolution games, the K62 eats for breakfast. Games at 640x480 however are still a challenge. I'd be keen to hear what you guys think. But I was hoping for Tomb Raider, System Shock and Screamer 2 to run a little bit better. Maybe my expectations are unrealistic and we have to keep in mind that we're dealing with a Socket 7 platform, which means we have a limited frontside bus of only 66 MHz as well as PCI graphics. Whereas on the Super Socket 7 platform we increase the frontside bus to 100 MHz and have double the bandwidth for the graphics card. This is definitely something I want to check out and do a video about. But back to the K62, what's not to love about this processor? For starters, it is the top dog, but you don't have to run it at 400 MHz, just lower the multiplier and run it at whatever speed you need. The lowest you can run it at is 133 MHz. The K62 is also readily available on eBay and quite cheap. If you're asking me, and you have a Socket 7 motherboard, you should definitely get yourself a K62 and try it out. 
I also love the look of it. It certainly is a very attractive CPU with a very unique style. Next week we will look at a real game changer for the Socket 7. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and if you have, good on you. Share the video, spread the love and I'll see you soon with another video.